Hi everybody, this is Solar Girl. I was just gonna do a quick video on the top five questions about solar. So question number one, how much power do I need? Well, this will depend on your consumption. So you should look at your power bill and find the total monthly usage and see how much that is. And what I did, I just went to greengardenchicken.com there solar systems are set on the monthly usage so it already says on their packages you know if you use 200 monthly usage the package already says on the title 200 monthly usage so it's a no-brainer you can easily pick it and that's how we did it but uh, you can pick any solar company and usually they'll work with you to show you uh, from your wattage on your monthly statement how much you're gonna need Okay, let's see. Um, question number two. What do I do during gray days? Well, for gray days, like today, it's very gray. The best thing to do is learn to be more efficient. But does that mean that would be like getting um, a set of light bulbs? You have all LED lights. You know, I have all LED lights. And if they're all on, I still have less than 100 watts being used. Well, how about your oven? You know, if you cook with an oven you might think about changing it out to a toast oven they make even a really big size now that could fit a pizza pan or a casserole dish and they only run on 1300 watts compared to a regular oven that takes like 45 5000 watts what else you could also make sure your house is properly insulated to keep the cold out and the heat in and vice versa in the summer that help a lot and um, for your dryer, dry your clothes outside on the line and get a 120 dryer for the winter time instead of running a 220, get a 120. They do make those, I have one. Um, another thing that you could do if that still is not enough is you can think about maybe getting a grid tie system. People usually get grid tie because if the solar is not producing enough, then they could just switch it back to the grid and get whatever they need until the sun is bright enough for them to get enough power. So those are some options that you could do for uh, uh, those gray days. Okay, let me think. Uh, question number three. Is a ground mount better or a roof mount better? Well, this depends on you and your house situation. You've got a lot of land. Maybe you might consider a ground mount they are easy to clean because you can reach them but they're not hard to clean and take care of either I mean, you just got to wipe them off with a brush or something and of course you only have to worry about that if you're in snow country so in that case a roof mount would be fine but if your roof is in the wrong direction then you might have to go with a ground mount another benefit of a roof mount is it doesn't have the expense for paying for all the ground supports for a ground mount so it's a bit cheaper but then you have to consider um, your roof in the right direction and uh, if you're changing the roof, you know, if the roof is leaking or something, then you have to work carefully around your panels to be able to repair your shingles. Okay, question number four. What kind of inverter should I get? Okay, there's two basic kinds of inverters. A pure sine wave inverter and a modified sign inverter. The modified sign is cheaper and it runs basic things like a dryer, washing machine, refrigerator, stove lights, those things can run on a modified inverter. But if you want a pure sign inverter, those are good for if you have special equipment such as a lot of computer uh, related things like stereo equipment, computers, equipment that goes with it modems things like that that might need a pure sine wave because they run a different wavelength <laughs> that they need that so if you don't need a lot of that then a modified sine inverter would work for you so it'd be a cheaper route but if you do have a few of those things and you're worried then I would definitely stick with the pure sine inverter so you don't have to worry about anything exploding and everything working perfectly Number five, let's see, what's the benefit of a grid tie to an off-grid? 
Well, again, both of them have their benefits. Um, a grid tie is cheaper. It also is easier in installation. You don't have to do a whole ground mounting and then put the panels on. And um, you don't have to worry about batteries. And if you have gray days, you don't have to worry about gray days because you can just go back on the grid. Benefit of an off-grid system is you can take it anywhere. Maybe a remote location where they can't even get um, power out there on a power line. So you can't even get the grid anyway. So off-grid would definitely be the solution and cheaper. Some places it's even more expensive to run a power line. So a lot of people look into getting an off-grid system just to avoid that cost. Another benefit of off-grid is that you have your own battery bank. So even if the grid tie power is on or it's having maybe a, one of those snow days and it goes off, you don't have to worry about that because you have your own power. So you got your own backup. So you have a little bit more control over what days you get power. And of course, both of them have the benefit of uh, less bill, <laughs> no bill, right? Depending on how much power or solar panels you have or how big a system you have, you have less power bill, which is awesome, of course. Um, let me see. Uh, to make sure you get a cheaper system, there's an extra bonus here. Question number six. <laughs> how do you get a cheaper system? Well, I answered that a little bit in one of the other questions. Is to be more efficient. Make sure you're efficient. Turn the lights off. Turn the power off when you're not using it. Downgrade a little bit. You know, get a toaster oven instead of a huge oven. Don't get big, fancy, expensive things. Get things that have low wattage. Um, definitely LED lights. That works fantastic. Unplug everything when you're not using it. They even plugged into the wall and not using it. It still draws current. So all these ways would make your system not have to support so much. And if you have less power going out, then you could have a smaller system and cheaper in the long run. Okay, I think that's all the questions. If you guys have any more questions, let me know, leave a comment below, and I'll answer them. I right, like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.